Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This is video number two on the late actor Heath Ledger. This one is fascinating because he wouldn't leave me alone after video number one. Now, the only one that bugged me like that was him and Kate Spade, okay? So I've gotta come back and do Kate Spade's video because she's like sitting over there looking at me like TikTok, hurry up <laughs> with the video. I'm not joking, I just said, that's why I said her name because she like literally just caught my vision over here. Anyway, Heath, <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing him, I'm throwing you over for a man. That's funny. Okay, she says that I'm I'm flirting with a man on the other side, which can actually happen, but that's not what I was doing. Heath just never left my side since I did the first video. So I wanted to start talking about it, and it's him coming through me, explaining to me what he was using to shut the body down. So he's talking about being introduced in a mystical way. So first he's showing me a setting where uh, somebody was introduced to him like a East Indian or a Hindu guru type of person. He's showing me this person around him and he's showing me the person as being somebody who was highly recommended, highly thought of, like a guru, like we would bow down to them. We would, um, in reference, a mentor, somebody in a spiritual reference. But it's interesting because he's showing me they're all sitting cross-legged and they're all sitting. So he's been invited to watch this. So that's when he first got hooked. He was invited to watch this with a dark-haired actor friend of his, watch the actor go into an altered state and actually watch what happened to the actor when he left his body and what he described coming back in. And Heath is saying that he immediately got hooked on this. And I was accurate about it. It was around the time of the Monster Ball movie when this really started happening. But what happened then, it was probably, I'm gonna say a year and a half before he did that movie, filmed that movie, whenever that was, okay? I'm sure it aired at a different time than when they filmed it. But what happened is the, re, the, the subject matter of his movies became darker and darker after that because he basically aligned himself with the energy that he picked up on the other side. They trick you, he says. Um, it's not a trick, the experience. A lot of people do this. He's letting us know that a lot of our people in government, a lot of our people in positions of, quote, power or admiration within society are doing this to harness their energy. What is happening from the way that I'm seeing it with him, what is happening is they are pulling energy from the other side and they are cloaking themselves in it. So they are wearing really nice like cashmere sweaters. And so when you see them, you wanna to touch them like this and you wanna follow them and you wanna read about them and you wanna hire them and you want to throw money at them and you wanna do all of these things. He's saying, because it comes from the other side, the energy in and of itself is six times as powerful as we are here. Because remember, we are slow and dense here. So he's talking about gathering the energy over there, cloaking himself in it, which is like wearing um, clothes, a robe, a sweater, and, he, and they are being seen. So what happens with it is once they combine that energy with this energy, our energy as a human being, but bringing back pieces of that energy, their magnetism becomes very powerful. This is what he's showing me. Um, their energy, their auric field extends out extremely. So that makes us want to reach out to them because remember, we feel like their energy is, um, it gets, it meshes with our energy. So we immediately see it as being good because it's inside of us. That's kind of how he's describing it. So there's an energy, an sh energy shift and energy meshing. So the energy is meshing together and that's what we're seeing. So we're seeing this energy mesh together. We're assuming it's the way we feel and we put the way we feel onto the way they feel. So they are cloaking themselves behind us. So a lot of the times this fan admiration and this this adulation and all of these things. Um, even look at world leaders, look at it in reference to that. When we throw our attention and our um, emotion towards it, that's what we're seeing. So when you're looking at it, I want you to understand that that has a lot to do 
with why we think these people are so great. So they are cloaking behind our energy. So their appearance is hidden. Their true appearance is hidden. Now, obviously he was a good person. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is when he started playing with this, okay, shutting down the respiratory, he's showing me how it shuts down the body, shuts the respiratory. It's almost like a physical paralytic, something that they give you so that your physical can't move. He's showing me this when you stepped in. He observed it the first time. He wants you guys to know that he went to somebody's house or party, a male actor, um, scruffy beard, dark hair, male actor um, who was doing this and he observed it the first time. Actually, the first three times is what he's showing me. And then he was stuck on it. He was like, I'm going to do this. And when he stepped out of his body, a lot of promises were made to him on the other side. So he was able to actually go over to the other side, come back in, feel certain things, know certain things, and be shown certain things and be promised certain things. This is what he's saying, okay? So he's saying that all of this was going on and then he would wake up in his body. He isn't, he is telling me it isn't DMT. A lot of people put in the comments it's DMT. Some of y'all, one, some of you cheeky ones put it's um, paint thinner, he's huffing. I love that. That struck me as hilarious actually uh, on some of the comments and other people were like, it's mushrooms, it's LSD. It's different. This is a chemically based substance. I was seeing chemically altered, okay? DMT is a natural substance. I know they cook it or make it or do something with it. Um, but this had chemical on it. So to me, it's more along the lines of an LSD type of drug, but it isn't something that's out there in the public. It is a component. Now this, this is kind of weird. Okay, so remember, this is what he's telling me, and I don't know why I want to say this, but remember the kids that were all smoking the fake marijuana for whatever reason that would be? They were smoking the fake marijuana. Okay, so they're smoking that and it's called spice, I think, and then some of them were wigging out or whatever that was about. Okay, he's telling me that part of the reason those people were waking out is when they smoke that stuff, the fake marijuana, not the actual plant marijuana. I'm talking about the bullshit incense marijuana. He's showing me that when they smoke it, the reason they had these weird reactions was because it literally, um, how he's showing me is, okay, the human body is here. Okay, so here's my human body. He's showing me that it literally through the middle of our bodies. Okay, so not our hands on either side, not our left or right side, but in the middle of our body from the crown chakra all the way down and it extends up here. The minute that you smoke it, he's sort of showing me a tube that's going right down the middle of the body and the tube, right? Like literally through the middle of the energy field and it's hollowed out like this, it's spiraled is what he's showing me. That spice immediately allowed the body to become a portal for energies, beings, or entities, or demons, or angels, or whatever you wanna call it, okay, name it whatever you want. But he's showing me that they were coming in and out of the people's physical body like a freeway. That is what he's showing me with the substance he took, and he's calling it a chemical, okay? So he's not saying it's a derivative of a natural product. He's saying it's made in a laboratory, and it's made to shut the body down to a state just above the death state, if not really perusing death. So when, when I look at that, I'm thinking of really shutting the body down into a state of not working, paralyzing it. That's kind of what he's letting me know. Paralyzing it and then allowing energy to come into it while stepping sideways to it. So when he was on the other side, he, he could see himself and the people he says told him all kinds of things like you can have this, you can have these movies, you can be this person, you can do this. What they didn't tell him, and keep in mind, it's a trick. So when you agree to this or you see it, and it's very enticing is what he's telling me, and he didn't quite to mean to go that far down the road, but he went that far down the road. I didn't mean to go that far down the road. And he's saying it's very enticing. So once you've crossed out of your body and you see in the astral levels what and dimensionally what can what you can have and how you can bring that source of energy back and it gives you tower, power. So let, let's look at it this way. Um, let's look at it in the sense of if I could say to you, here's a shot and it's going to make you young and strong and gorgeous for like the rest of your life. I think I'd take it. Okay. So it's that kind of thing. It gives you that kind of substance to the way that you feel is how he's showing me. 
um, he did this for quite some time and it was probably a year and a half before Monster Ball came out when they filmed it, okay? So it's not that he was filming it or wasn't filming it, it's when they filmed it, all right? Um, a year and a half before that, he started to do this. It quickened the pace of his public acceleration. Like he was just like, he, he could feel. Now I'm gonna tell you another thing he's telling me about this. He's showing me that while he was acting, while he was walking around, while he was making babies, while he was doing everything, okay? He's showing me that the way that we felt about him as an actor bounced through and off of us and came back to him and fed him, okay? So he's saying in order to stay as himself after he started crossing out, he needed to be fed by us. So it's this interesting dichotomy um, and it became darker and darker. So when he'd cross out of his body, he's saying they tricked me. Now what it could be like, and this, I, I don't know why I'm going here with this. He's not saying this, I'm doing this because pimps are on my mind all the time. But it reminds me of when a girl is a runaway and she runs away and she meets an older guy like out on the street and the guy's like, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna love you. Your parents didn't love you. I'm gonna love you. And the girl, because she's dumb or naive, she's gonna be like, oh, he loves me. He's my boyfriend. Then the guy will introduce her to his other girlfriends and they love him so much they make money for him. And then she will start making money for him like they make money for him. And so it is a bait and switch, it's a trick. I give you love and adulation and I love you the way that you weren't loved by your parents. And I'm speaking again from the runaway and the pimp, okay? Not speaking about Heath Ledger. But the analogy is coming to me. And then the girls wanna please because they love the boyfriend, they've been loved. So they need to feel that, so they will do what he asks, such as sell their bodies, strip, sell drugs, run drugs, whatever it is. Heath is kind of making me feel that that's what he was engaged in with this, that's what was going on. He was tricked and as time went on, especially around Monster Ball time, that's when the energy got dark and he couldn't get his way out of it. And what I, what he's showing me was happening, happening is when he would cross out of his body during those times and after those times, He's showing me the equivalent of putting like a plastic bag over him. That's what he's showing me. But I think it's more like binding his energy on the other side because he's pushing out like this. He's showing me this like you're okay. I'm having a panic attack anyway, like you're in a plastic bag or you're being covered in saran wrap. I know there's some people out there that like that shit, but anyway, you're, they're covered in saran wrap and you're like, you can't breathe. It's on your mouth and you're like pushing like this. He's doing that on the other side which means they're binding his energy. So when he would come back into the physical body, there would be a sense of, I have to do what I was told because I won't get free over here and I can't breathe. Even though his spirit body was over there, his physical body was here and there was an entity moving in between. So he's like a puppet on strings is what he's showing me towards the end of his life. He really didn't have control. Now he does address his drug addiction. Yes, he was a drug addict or a person who liked to take drugs. This doesn't surprise me because drug addicts or people addicts or people who like to take drugs like to leave their body. Every time you do drugs, okay, whether you think so or not, I'm not talking about a little bit of pot or weed or whatever. I'm talking about like if you're shooting up, if you're taking a bunch of Oxycontin, if you're taking smoking opium, okay? Opium especially, like if you smoke that shit, you go right out of your body. That's why drug addicts love drugs because it, it takes the burden and weight of the physical off your mind and you elevate, okay? So this is what was going on with him. So while he was here, in order to get rid of the severe panic about being bound over there, he started doing drugs over here. Catch 22, be careful what you wish for, you may just get it. This is what he's saying. And he's also saying the compound in which he was using was a chemically based compound. It was something that would be considered to be made in a, um, a laboratory and it was directly mind altering. He's showing me, he's showing me like the back of the crown chakra and the, the neurons that are in the back of your brain here or the back of your head. And he's kind of showing me that this drug went right there and just basically zapped down the wires and then opened up your energy field into a cylinder so things could come in and out. You know what's weird about that? Probably in 2002, 2003, I had a handful of clients, if not more, a handful plus more of clients 
that basically um, I would see tubing coming out of their body and I was like, what the fuck is that? Like they would sit down literally in my house. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> like, ah, uh, what is that? And it was tubing. And I wonder if that's what he's talking about. I could never figure out what it was. They were hooked up to something um, or they puppeteered strings, attachments, etheric attachments. Now, you can get those, but he's showing me literally like the physical body oh, through the middle. It's a spiral tube down and the energy's going up. So it's like a freeway up and down. So there was room for things to come and go, come and go into the grounds energy and back up to the other side. Keep in mind, when you cross out of your physical on this side and you astral travel, you have no idea where you're going, none, none because what is on the astral level is presented based on your mindset, the way that you think, what you think, how you think. So you don't really know what's going on. You really don't. Um, it's not like going into the realm of the God source because there is an absolute certainty about where you are. And Heath is stopping me right now, actually saying, saying that even though the promises are made and people are falling for it and people will fall for it. He's saying the spiritual war that we're talking about, he's basically showing me that on the other side, so on the astral levels and dimensions, that it's been one, okay? So the ones that are on this side are causing a lot of chaos for people and tricking more and more people, tricking more and more souls in order to gather an army, but the army on the other side is already won. So the world is flipping. It's reverse world right now. So what you think is happening isn't, and what is, is. Okay, what you think is happening isn't, and what you think isn't, is. Okay, there, I said it. So it's flipping is what he's showing me, all right? So he's basically showing me that. It's like he's going around saying, it's been decided on the other side. So there's basically, we are we are really, really geared down on this side. We don't pick up on a lot, quite frankly. Human beings, until we elevate ourselves and actually keep ourselves as vessels and pure and connect, we don't get a lot of information. Like we're not the brightest group of things on the planet. Really, we're not. Um, so there's elements of that that are happening. And he's saying that this war has been won. So the ones that tricked him, the ones that enticed him, the pimps on the other side. I'm sorry, that's my wording. I don't know how else to describe it, but you know that pimps, they come dressed nice, they hand you money, they pick you up, oh, they're gonna protect you, your daddy ain't gonna hit you anymore, and then the, then you owe them. That's what he's saying, okay? So these this, this way that he was able to harness that energy and perform, there was a response to that. He had to pay that back is what he's saying. So there's, there's elements of, there's just elements of that is what he's showing me. And it's weird, but that is what he's showing me. So I need to end this video because I have a client and I can hear my phone beeping over there. I will be back and so will Heath because I doubt he's going to leave because he hasn't left yet. He's one and then we got Kate Spade, okay? So y'all know I'm going to come back with Kate Spade because she's sitting literally right over there. By that I mean her image is sitting on my couch. She still has her legs crossed. She's still wearing a skirt and she is still smoking a cigarette. So for now, and once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.